Hey everyone, Siobhan Nicolau here, taking you into chapter six of my first book, The Absence of Evil Loves Reclamation of the Soul. Now, the sixth chapter is entitled Dancing with Mrs. D. And this takes you from the time that I left my husband and had been away from him a few years until the time of my wake up call in 1988. A whole lot of things happened at that time that were an excruciatingly painful awakening. I had been so perfect and so for so many years keeping a lid on top of what I had no idea was in there. Um, top of the everything in terms of the way society rates you as being good enough and acceptable. And, you know, it's, what's what I find funny is that there are still some people in my life who see that I am more acceptable back then than I am now in my light. I think that is just trippy when people, their, their perception of you hasn't changed. So they see you the same way. And not only that, if they see you the same way, they can still be comfortable around you. However, I've changed so much. One of the sayings in our book is, I have died a million times and been reborn. It is only your vision that is not. It is only your sight, the way you see, that has not evolved to see the new me. I have actually been in old crowds of people as the new vibration I am only to have myself go completely unrecognized, like they could not even see me. And that was interesting having known this particular group of people for over 30 years. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. <laughs> it's fun when that happens. That's happened in other ways, but when you go into a group of people that you knew for so many decades and spent so much of your life with and nobody actually recognizes you vibrationally. I haven't changed much physically, really. Um, but yeah, vibrationally, there was so much of a variance they couldn't even see. So this chapter takes you from ground zero. My pain had reached a threshold and I didn't even really know it. But when I started to feel it, I, it was just unbelievable. So there was a couple of things, I'm not going to spoiler alert, that led up to my seeking something more than I had ever sought up to that time. I mean, I seriously never even knew there was a way to heal. I was never looking for healing. My idea of healing was just staying in the darkness staying, you know, staying in society, staying within what the world felt to be acceptable so I could belong somewhere, you know, just all of the many ways that the world finds you acceptable, right? Working out all the time, you know, top of the sales teams, you know, that kind of thing. So it was all ego-based. Um, as soon as I opened the door to the light when I finally decided I was going to search for something different than I had ever before. My life changed like that. And the way I describe it, and I'm pretty certain it actually happened, is that I opened the door to the light for the first time. The hand of God came through, grabbed a hold of me, pulled me through so fast, shut the door, and my life has never been the same. That is how it happened for me. So not only did my life always move fast, number one, number two, it really sped up after I opened the door to God, right? Seek and you shall find. Knock on the, the door and it will be opened up unto you. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it didn't open up to me in a biblical sense. I mean, I do quote some things in the Bible because um, there's some pretty good quotes in there. I just, you know, don't take them literally like most people interpret it. But for me, that's kind of what it was like. So anyhow, everything, not just my perception, not just I softened up. I mean, it was a fast track to clean up time. It's the only way I can put that into words. Um, as soon as I found meditation, that was the, really what I had been searching for all those years. The more that I stayed in my inner world and um, in, this, in my silence, in, in, inside of myself, 
And the more, you know, that I did things that made me relax to feel like myself. And I think, you know, some people really do take drugs or drink because it, they feel more like themselves. It helps them relax in certain environments. It helps you be more open, which I was absolutely not open for a long time. I was always in protective mode. And uh, that allowed me to loosen up and allow a little bit more of my essence out, albeit through some really interesting filters. But um, nonetheless, what I did learn on the backside of all of that too, is there is a difference between addictions and habits. Habits are something that I had. I did drank and things for many years. It was part of my life. It was part of the way I lived. It wasn't just something, I don't know, it was hard to, that just sums it up. <laughs> it was just part of how I lived. And, um, but when it when I opened the door to the light and came through, it was not a big deal to give any of that up. It was progressive over about, oh, I'd say 18 months, two years period. But within that time, I just kept talking to the angels, Archangel Michael specifically, to help me with different things. And alas, I woke up and they were gone. So I was being inspired without even knowing it at that time, how to take control of my life and replace these not so healthy habits with really good habits and things to do nice things for myself. And so that's how I ended up doing it. Um, <clears throat> addictions are something you can't get out from underneath. You can't give it up and it stays vibrationally within you forever. An addiction is something that you can abstain from, but that vibration is strong. That's why I think they call it a monkey on your back. It's like you just can't shake that. It takes an intense amount of work. I mean, you can shake it, but I don't know too many people who are going to work that hard to do it. Um, it takes a, a lot of evolution and different ways to do that. And I can say, thank you, God. Even in the days when I had done drugs, they were the top of the food chain drugs. And what I mean by that is I wasn't getting them off the street. I wasn't an addict. I wasn't putting crap in my body. Well, I was, but not like that. You know, I knew what I was getting and it was pure, if you will. <laughs> so I thought, gee, God was even looking out for me even when I was in my drug days. Wow. Thank you, God. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful. Um, but anyhow, so there's just so much you get in the backside of your healing. These weren't things I could have ever thought about at the time. But when you do heal, you get the information on the other side of your healing. So this particular chapter ripped it wide open, set me on a path within months that sent my life in a, in a fast left turn. And um, wow, what a ride. So you're really going to love it. <laughs> now, this chapter speaks about the man who would become my second husband. Okay, so I was, uh, geez, 27 at the time, 27. And um, there's just a lot of information in there about us, how we met, where the attraction was, where I was at at the time, um, the deceptions on the other side of the coin, just other things that I became aware of through this man. And then, um, through the reflection of his family was incredibly powerful for me. And that was some of the, what would, um, give me the information and the reflection enough to begin to heal. So he was moving into my real healing part of life the first real big opening to that beyond the meditation that I'd done. Because seriously, as soon as I took that first class, oh my God, I couldn't even go back to take any more because my life changed that fast. I mean, it was within weeks. And so you'll see, <laughs> wake up, it's the harmonic convergence. I had no freaking clue. Um, welcome to the new world. You're part of it and you're gonna find out what that means soon enough. And so that's where I was at at this particular chapter. Um, what a ride. Uh, you'll see how things will take care of themselves. You'll, you'll read a lot about things that perhaps you've experienced and didn't know how to, um, didn't know what, what, what had happened. Um, this was the, the door to my true beginnings of healing. And I'm extremely, extremely grateful for that. 
So this takes you from 1988 to 1993. And um, that was a good time in a lot of ways. And it was a fast time, like all of my times. And um, rewarding beyond belief to get through the other side. So I think you're really going to enjoy what it's like to dance with Mrs. D. 